We are confronted with an unprecedented situation. Two people have died while connected to their surrogates. I think we may actually have a homicide here. First one in 15 years. El Surrogates. <laughs> El Surrogates. There wasn't a single Mexican in this entire film. There wasn't? I don't there think wasn't so. A Mexican no, no. Surrogate in this there? is all pure white people. Yeah, well, these are people who get to choose to look however they want and whatever body they want. So, of course, yeah, no Mexicans. Yeah, well, of course, black people choose to be white. You know? <laughs> Shit, we've been trying to do that for years. What? Contacts, weaves. You think there'd be a Salma Hayek in there somewhere? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I love Mexicans. I would choose to be Mexican. I'd be my first choice. No, you wouldn't. Uh, no, I would. I would be a hot Mexican chick just so Leon would be chasing around after me. And I'd take <laughs> oh. a bunch of pictures of him standing there with his willy out going, oh, come on, baby. You know what? Yeah, you, know like what a hill sketch. you know what happened? You would be a Mexican. It'd be just your luck. You're on your way here to do review. And a truck comes by, picks you up, and has you mowing somebody's lawn later on oh, that day. See, no. I know. He, he tried to play a trick on me and get sent to boys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you fucking a donkey or something. <laughs> a robot donkey, but a donkey. You're like, eh, it's a living. <laughs> well, we already <laughs> talked about what we thought about the trailer. Now, our predictions were I said matinee, you said rental, and I you said, said and you too. said matinee also. And I I think some of our, well, I didn't get to see the movie because I was off watching another movie I had to review, but I think uh, some of our, our reviews are kind of off. Some, some people changed their mind and some people are on the mark. Um, now, we talked about the graphic novel, and the graphic novel deals with a society where people, 95% of the people have surrogates, these robots, and so the people don't get out of bed, they don't leave the house. The robots do it for them, and they can live that experience through the machines. And when the day finally comes when the surrogates are like uh, put down and people have to come out of their shell, they're like, oh, shit, what do we do now because we're all fat and lazy? Well, it is the kind of thing. It's, it's almost like baseball where <laughs> people start using steroids. You know, it gives them the, the edge, that advantage, and where some people are like, that's bullshit, man. You shouldn't do that. But those are the guys breaking all the records. And after a while, it's like, okay, either I'm going to be pure and nobody will ever hear me. Oh, I'm going to get some of this, too, so i got to juice up. I mean, th this film is clearly making us sort of, hey, we need to go back out to the parks and let our kids play type of message, you know. But honestly, really, I mean, is anyone going to turn this down? And is it really going to get that bad where every single person on the planet goes, you know what? I am never going to leave my house. I just I just don't well, think it would. Me either. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. As much as it's trying to push, push that message, I was like, yeah, I can't quite see people doing that. Now, one thing you, that you don't know that wasn't so much in the book – uh, it, at least it didn't explain to this detail. It's like, yeah, the idea of just being home, being a sloth, letting your muscles atrophy while you go live you know, through a robot sounds like, hey, I don't know if I would do that. However, the alternative is to be a complete Luddite redneck with no technology whatsoever. And given those two choices... Uh, robot right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the, there's a there's a group of uh, uh, you know uh, people who are against this who live in every city has its federally mandated zones that no surrogates are allowed in, and the whole thing is run by a guy they call the Prophet, played by Ving Rhames, who needs a bath really bad. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, but so does everyone in there. The yeah. whole thing is like suddenly like you know I mean they're all you know, raking in the mud. It's like, really, no surrogates, but you can't, you have showers? So in the book, there was a detective who was trying to investigate the... Yeah, there's the, two of them. The, the, oh, yeah, there's two, in the book, there's two detectives, detectives, and they're trying to investigate the quote-unquote murder of people's surrogates. And you don't know if it really qualifies as murders because it's just like a car breaking down. Somebody's going around and, and destroying people's surrogates. Right. And this, the difference, though, in this movie, and tell me if I'm wrong, Bruce Willis plays a detective, and... The difference here is that when someone's surrogate is murdered, the human is also murdered, too. Yeah, they figure out there's a guy running around with a gun that when he zaps people, they their brains liquefy, basically, back in, their, back in wherever they really are, which is definitely not part of the book. Any idea how a surrogate's head would explode from the inside? What do the operators say? Not much. They're dead. If you're trying to imply a link between VSI products and an operator's accidental death... I'm not implying anything. I just want to know how an operator can be killed by signals from a surrogate. The idea itself is absurd. If it were possible, it would defeat the entire purpose of surrogacy. Surrogates have jumped from bridges, been shot, even blown to bits without the least bit of harm to their operators. What about a human hit? What would cause one of them to blow up? Agent Greer, we're not doctors. Honey, I don't know what you are. Now, I think the fear that Leon and I had here was that it was going to lose the whole right. real message of the book, you know, and and kind of that that essential like 
pointing of the finger that is the whole reason it even exists in the first place. Otherwise, it's just a generic action story. And much to my surprise, the movie dis- just made it have that much more action in it, really, by doing that, I thought. They managed to keep to the themes pretty nicely. It's, it's one of these things where, like, yeah, you know, they, they kind of stray from the, the initial premise from the book, but they come back around to where the book, you know, they kind of end in the same place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, they, you know, they, they did keep to the spirit of it. I can't take that away from them. Uh, they just find a way to crowbar in some action scenes, which, you know, it's the kind of thing where, like, hey, this isn't. I don't particularly like that, but I understand when you make a movie for the mass public, you do have to have that kind of thing in there. As well as making the who done it part of it itself that much more interesting to me. I actually liked the who done it, you know, solution here. It was more elegant than the one in the book. I thought it was simpler. I can't say I liked it better, but it, it was simple. It's, it's the kind. Of, these are compromises where I'm like, I understand why you did it. I can allow it. It's not my preferred way, but sure. I, I, I liked it. It was more, it suited the form better for sure, yes. at least in, in that sense. Now, I did miss the idea of that super powered ninja type guy with a full body electroshock costume running around. And that was from the book. book. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I mean, there, there's other things here too. Like we were complaining about, oh, now everybody has superpowers. Uh, well, that's kind of the equivalent. Like that's like the trade off. Instead, you get a couple scenes where a person in a surrogate can do really cool, badass shit because, you know, they're in a big robot body. Now, that being said, you would think that everyone would be jumping right. around and like, you know what? I'm not going to take the elevator today. Instead, I'm going to scale up the side of the building. <laughs> you they, know, they, stuff they like that. To, they seem to go back and forth on like what these these surrogates can do. They, it's a little fast and loose. It's not quite consistent. So they don't really because the easy thing to say would would be like, okay, you, every robot has a restriction on it. They do make clear that there's different tiers of robots you can buy. It's like anything else. It's yeah, still a capitalistic true. society, so you can get the dirt cheap, you can only see and hear through it model. You know, you can get the, that version that doesn't even have a face on it or any yeah. sort of details. What? Okay, yeah. you remember the Herbie Hancock video for uh, Rocket? Yeah, like you, get you, one of you those. get one like boop boop. <laughs> exactly. So, but where so you can, can get kill. one that like is so real that you can't really even tell the difference. You know, I mean, you yourself are totally convinced, and anybody looking at you is totally convinced. So, in other words, I could get a surrogate and not have to wear a condom anymore. Well, yeah, you're having sex with a robot. Yeah, whether, it's two robots uh, having sex with each other. Yeah, or even a guy and a robot having sex, or you know, either way, you need two actual people. Or yeah, okay. your mom didn't teach you about this, Corey? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she didn't, that wasn't in your she, didn't, she didn't teach me about the surrogate robots. The robot uh, chapter yeah. wasn't. It she was didn't in teach mine. me about the surrogate birds and bees. I don't even want to go into the whole alien one. That, was, that, that <laughs> got a little disturbing for me. Now, but. one of the big things of it is there's a point when Bruce Willis's character doesn't have his surrogate anymore. Uh-huh. Like, like it, you know, it it gets d- destroyed. And he has to go without it. Like in, like in the book, the guy chose to not. He was like, you know what? I just want to be a human for a while. Well, he did get his surrogate beat down, but they were like, oh, it was the same thing. They were like, hey, you got to wait for your new one. It'll be like a couple days. And he's like, yeah, no, I don't really want to. Right. He does the same thing here. Well, but his wife is just so he's like, hey, you know what? Let's just be people again. She's like, fuck you. No. <laughs> No, I ain't doing it. I will yeah. divorce you before I give this up. I ain't, ain't nobody taking this away from me. And the thing is, like the women, uh, I forget the woman who plays his wife um, and also his partner, Rada Mitchell. Um, you uh, know, Rosamund Pike? Think, probably. Pike, probably. Uh, it, 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 one plays Maggie, his wife. Yes. Rosa, yeah, 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 I think and, of R- and, Rosamund Pike, yeah. As surrogates, man, you know, that, I mean, they're, they're hot. Now, when they show the real women... They are toe up from the floor up. Yeah, well, I mean, hair looks like 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 shredded wheat. They yeah. they got they got big spots. Their lips are chapped. They've been sitting in like a shadowed room and not using their muscles at all, except to get up and take a shit every once in a while <laughs> yeah. for if like that. who knows how long. And they look like they look like Morlocks, you know? Yeah. Whoa, yeah, it's yeah. that kind of thing. Like, honey, come on, come out of that room and forget your surrogate and let's yeah, yeah. yeah. go back, go back in the room. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll plug it up again. Just, just, at least for the character of his wife there's an argument in here which has a lot to do with why their their marriage is so estranged is that they had had a son who had died and ever since then she'd been heavily dosing herself on painkillers and just didn't want to see anybody and was kind of escaping even having to think about it by living in her surrogate full time sort right of. so there that whole subplot between the two of them is actually better handled than I was afraid it was going to be. It, and it ends up it having a nice little touch. And thankfully, nowhere near as dark as the gra- it was in the graphic novel. You know, it, it, well, that's true. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I see where we are. We're, we're very close in opinion on this. Yeah. It's just to me, I feel like, like, I personally would have preferred to have sacrificed some of the action to get a little bit more emotional depth out of what's going on. Because there's some deep themes here that kind of had to take a back seat to, you know, the, the murder plot and, and, you know, watching some robots jump around and, you know, go through traffic, (laughs) but still, 
I, I did like it better than I expected to. And I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. I mean, I'm, I'm coming in at a really high rental, probably a low matinee. I, you know what? I'll go ahead and say a low matinee. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, actually. Um, I, I'm more of a firm matinee. Uh, uh, Jonathan Mostow, the director, also did Terminator 3, which I know mm-hmm. for reasons beyond me, a lot of people hate when I think it's a perfectly competent movie. I did, too. You know? I, I liked like, it. Yeah, I was like, it's nowhere near it's, as it's good as, as, as good the first, first two. two but, it's just a, it's it's a copy special, of the second one, pretty that, much. What but. I'm saying is it's competent. You watch it. There's nothing really bad about it. Right. It's just it is what it is. It's got some fun scenes. It's the T-1000. With tits and a vagina. Same thing with U5, U5. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with this movie U571. You're like, well, it's no DOS boot, right. which is what it's copying, but, but it's a competent little adventure movie. And this, too, is in its own way. It's sort of like it feels like a competent total recall in a yeah. weird sort of way. Um, it, it could have been better in a lot of ways. One of the biggest problems is with the acting at points, because when people are in their surrogate bodies, they're supposed to be, you know, not expressionless, but definitely limited in what they're doing with their face. So they look like kind of like a, I don't know, uh, they look like some of them look like Muppets and some of them <laughs> are, are playing it like they're in like an 80s robot. Well, movie like you said, some of them didn't buy the bonus plan. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you have to chalk it up to. Uh, I, I she's do, got OCD. Or something. I do like that. There was one moment here. that really made me laugh where her husband oh. comes in to argue with her in her salon and uh he's like god damn it what and she just she goes look that's enough and just turns herself off from the other side and you know that's it it's the end of the argument i totally wish i could do Dude, that shit to I, people. I tell you, yeah yeah that would that would be a huge selling point <laughs> for surrogates it's oh like, i know i know you like when your girlfriend starts arguing with you you know you just yeah. shut yourself up <laughs> but you know if she do that to you you take a, a sharpie and draw a mustache on her no that wouldn't be my first thought oh no <laughs> No, you know what? She'd be so pissed. At I, I, you, know, you hear about girls who go out and like, they get mad at their boyfriends and trash their shit, smash their cars up. I mean, they, you try to cut that surrogate back on, that shit would be all cut up and deformed and messed up. <laughs> that bitch would be mad at you. Hey, man, those things are expensive. And that, yeah, yeah you buying me a new surrogate. Shit, your surrogate would be waking up in a garbage dump somewhere. How the fuck I get here, bitch? What? God damn it. But uh, so what, what would you give it? Uh, like, like I said, oh, it's you a said firm matinee. Firm matinee. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. This is that. much better than it has any right to be, but still nowhere near as good as it should have been. So, so you're talking about those rednecks. See, you, that's what I that scares me about this. You know, you hear about those phone sex lines where oh, yeah. you think you're talking to a woman and well, it's like a guy. Well, you, well that, that is that is a danger with a surrogate. I mean, yeah. you know, if that if that bothers you, I mean, as long as you're going like, hey, it's just me and a robot making out with another robot. Then that's fine. Yeah, it's like you don't try and have a relationship, really. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because yeah. I'm thinking, you know, you you meet that fine girl, take her home, or bring her out into the alley and start having sex with her, and then she's like, oh yeah, baby. And then at the other end, there's a guy on the other with a big bushy mustache, his his trucker hat on. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I love that big black meat. <laughs> hey man, what you don't know, you know, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> that body is all female. So yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not like he's in drag. It's his robot. I you mean, know? it would be funny to be the dude doing that and like you know just kind of have it on remote. And then about halfway through, switch it so your real voice comes on. <laughs> That's the one. Oh, I'm, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh God. This Give it awesome. to me, big boy. <laughs> your dick is so big. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, I got that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not too late. <laughs> uh, are they, uh, uh, are surrogates custom, uh, customizable then? You said. Sure, they had show yeah. people at one point who were like dressed uh, like almost like aliens. They were, you know, they're robots. Is one that's like black. Black, but like ebony black, like not real black, like like, like some sort of statue or something, wow. you know. And there's a, another one with spikes coming out of her head. And really? Like, wow. Yeah. So yeah, you can have any kind of robot made you want. In fact, that's another minor complaint was that you would expect it to see a lot more of that sort of thing, and not just people in those. Why wouldn't you put it in like a dog body or something like that? A talking you know? dog? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It's like why wouldn't you, you could put them in anything? <laughs> I wish I could put my in a dog body, you know. So like if I'm like taking a piss or crap out the middle of the street, and that guy comes up with that newspaper, get ready to hit me. I'd be like, I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> now go kill your family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kill, kill. So that means that on my surrogate, I can actually get an ass. See, I don't have much ass as a person, you know. I'd gladly take the cheap model as long as I can upgrade the ass on. Does that mean that you would use it a lot once you got it? <laughs> He's gonna be all ass. Well, I would use on both sides. We'd be like, hey, Mike Tyson. How about this one, yeah. huh? <laughs> you, you little fag, huh? I dare you to come rape me. How? I'll screw you. I'll screw you till you love me. <laughs> no, I would. I would just go to the club and like flex my ass in front of girls until they. I turn around and I have no face. <laughs> and yeah. You know, I got the cheap model. And they're like, oh, but hey, I got that ass. <laughs> yeah, no. With, with, with the money you make, you, they would just put you inside the coho. Dude, you don't have enough money. You'd end up with just like the Chuck E. Cheese model. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a giant rat. Dude. Hey, how's it going? Going, going. You got all these sexy surrogates. I'm, I'm going to the bar. My Chuck E. Cheese outfit. How's it? How's it going? Go. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> What's going on? The public cannot be allowed to get the idea that using a surrogate can be fatal. Especially if it's true.